What I want to point out before I move any further, because there's a few crucial pieces missing from here, I'll point out a couple of things. Number one, you have four factor lines here, right? Uh, x minus 2, x plus 1 on the numerator, x plus 3, x minus 1 on the denominator. So you can see I've got more orange lines, okay? Um, when you look at your orange lines, because each one has a change in sign, when each one is zero, something happens. This is going to sound weird, but when a factor is zero, nothing never happens. Something has to take place. For example, see these two here, x plus 3, x minus 1. Those are on the denominator, right? So when these factors are zero, what happens to the entire function? Undefined. It's undefined. So therefore you get a vertical asymptote, right? On the other hand, if you have a look at these factors up the top, when they're zero, you don't get asymptotes, you get something else that's important. You get intercepts, right? So that's why if you have a look, have a look at how I've drawn <coughs> one, two, three, four <coughs> spots when the factors become zero, right? These two are the ones that become vertical asymptotes. These two are the ones that become intercepts. So you've got all that behavior there, okay? I've got my vertical asymptotes. I don't have all my asymptotes though, what am I missing? I'm missing a horizontal asymptote. Now again, you're so used to looking at ones where it's like, y equals zero. y equals zero comes up as a horizontal asymptote like 80 to 90 percent of the time. It's very very common. But this one isn't one of them, okay? Think again about your limits. Think again about what happens as x gets really really big. When x approaches infinity, how important are these numbers here, negative 2 and negative 3? They are not important at all. We call them trivial, okay? Now you would think that uh, these guys here are more important than the negative 2 and the negative 3. They are more important. But when you compare them to these guys, these are, like a, these are the 800 pound gorillas in the room. Okay, <laughs> The x squareds are really the guys who are in the driver's seat. Minus x, 2x, yeah they grow, but nothing in comparison to these guys. So these are the really important ones, they're the only ones that really matter. In relation to each other, how quickly are they growing? At exactly the same rate, one to one. So as x approaches the infinity, you're going to get like a billion over a billion, a billion over a billion, a Google over a Google, whatever. Okay, you get the same at the top and the bottom. So therefore, your horizontal asymptote will be y equals one. So go ahead and draw that guy in. Now, while I draw that in, I want you to notice this weird interaction between the horizontal asymptote and the regions. What do the regions tell you? What are the regions about? They are about positive and negative. They're about sign, right? So therefore, you get this weird section over here. You've shaded above the x-axis, but you've shaded below the asymptote, because the asymptote's not at zero anymore. Y equals zero, I should say. It's a y equals one. So therefore, you've got this kind of behavior. Okay. Now we're ready. I'm pretty sure I've got all of my features drawn in. Am I missing uh, any? Oh, I don't have y intercept. Of course. When x equals zero, what do you get? Uh, two thirds. So you've noticed I've got that being one. So two thirds better be a bit below that, right? So I'll, I'll chuck that guy in there. Okay. Are we ready to draw this thing? Over on the left, what's happening? You're going to get that weirdo sort of, you know, fenced in guy over here. Cool. Uh, let's go from left to right. You can see I've got this approaching down here behavior down in this corner, right? I've got this approaching up here behavior and in between I've got these two intercepts that I must pass through. So therefore the only shape I can think of that does that looks kind of like that. But use your imagination, okay? <laughs> so you can see I pass through the requisite spots. I obey the regions and I'm approaching the asymptotes. That's the only thing it can possibly do. Finally, on the right hand side, um, you again have a sort of hyperbole -y shape like here with one little difference. You've got an intercept in the middle, right? That's the only difference. I've just sort of moved it up. So can you see your left hand and right hand sides are kind of kind of, sort of, mirrored from each other. It's just that this bit looks different because you've got part of it crossing through the axis. That's why you've got an intercept in between. Okay. So, you're starting to get a vibe. Do you notice that this shape is actually remarkably similar? Let's go back. 
to this shape is just sort of facing in the opposite direction, and you've just got intercepts at different spots. That's all. Uh, yep. So how do you know that there isn't anything above the asymptote? Uh, OK, so good question. Um, and, and this question is actually valid for both. So uh, the question was, you'll notice I'm approaching this asymptote here from above, and I'm approaching that asymptote over there from below. So why, why isn't it something like that? Or, or like that. Why doesn't it do that turning thing that we've seen before? Okay. Now, before I give you the answer, I want you to think carefully. The horizontal asymptotes, where do they come from again? They come from limits, don't they? They come from limits. I can use limits to help me here as well. Think, think carefully. If I were to actually take some numbers, let's have a look at this. Here we go. Okay. Let's think about a number like, say, x equals 100. x equals 100. It's going to be a little bit awkward, but I'm going to get a result out of here that's meaningful. I can take x equals 100 and I can put it in here, right? Like, you can help me work this out. This top thing here is going to be 10,000 minus some stuff, right? The denominator, on the other hand, is going to be 10,000 plus some stuff. Do you agree? I don't really care what the stuff is. It's just little, little, little pieces that aren't that consequential. So which is going to be bigger, the numerator or the denominator? The denominator is clearly going to be bigger. Now, if you've got a number where the denominator is bigger, then what does that mean about the number in relation to 1? It's just below. Just below, right? Doesn't matter how much that, that um, comparison is like. These numbers can take off, right? So long as the denominator is bigger, this guy's below 1. Which is why when I had a look over here, you can see I'm coming from below 1, right? I get really, really close, but I never actually cross above. In exactly the same way, you can try this logic uh, on the left-hand side. Put in some negative numbers, right? And what you will find is you get the exact reverse behavior. Your numerator is going to be ever so slightly bigger than the denominator. Why is that? These guys here are both going to be, they're still going to be 10,000 or whatever. But look, what happens to these guys when x is negative 100? This is going to be a positive thing. And when x is negative 100, this is going to be a negative thing. So you've got a slightly bigger numerator over a slightly smaller denominator. That means you're going to be approaching from above. Does that make sense? So again, later on when you learn calculus, you can actually find out, does it turn or does it not? But this is kind of a quick and dirty way to work out, well, I'm coming from this side, therefore this is the shape I get.